everyone, thanks so much for tuning back in. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to be talking about the trade checklist again. Yesterday we talked about the short put as a naked option, and today we're gonna to be looking at the put credit spread. So we're gonna be looking at the defined risk counterpart of the short put which we covered yesterday. And we're gonna look at some similarities and differences and why one person might choose one over the other. So let's dig right into it and we'll get into the very basics of the put credit vertical spread where really we're just looking at the same exact situation as we were yesterday except we're defining our risk. So here we've got the stock price here and when we're looking to sell an out of the money credit spread. When we're looking at the put contracts, it's going to be below the options, the stock price I should say. So here we're looking to sell that out of the money option and we're going to buy a further out of the money option to define our risk. So when we're doing this, we're going to be able to route it for credit because the more we get closer to that stock price with our short option, we're gonna be collecting more on this option than we're gonna be paying to define our risk on that further dated option or the further out option on that strike price line. So we, we do know that a vertical put spread is defined risk, but we have to consider that it's going to be a lower credit than the naked put, but it's still going to be a high probability of success. And there's a reason why it's a lower credit than the naked put. So if we just think about the overview and the genetic makeup of this strategy, we're gonna be selling this out of the money put, but again, we have to buy a further out of the money put to define our risk. So how is our risk defined at the end of the day? Well, we know that what can happen is the stock price can go against us, which is going to be bad for our short put position because we want this spread to expire out of the money so that we can collect any premium that we received originally as profit. So if our put is out of the money right now, our entire spread is out of the money, if the stock price goes below our strike, we're going to see a loss on this position, but it's going to be capped at that long put option. If we remember that a put contract is just the right to sell 100 shares of stock at a certain strike price, if I'm buying this put option here, I have the right to sell 100 shares of stock here, and if I'm selling the option here, which is just the other side of that transaction, I basically have to purchase these shares here if, it's, if I leave this spread and let it go into the money, but I have the ability to sell it right back out to the market at this strike price, which is just a little bit lower. So that is how the defined risk aspect works, works of it, but we have to remember that because we're defining our risk, we're going to be taking on a lower credit than if we were to have just sold that short put outright but we're still going to have a high probability of success because at the end of the day, we are selling out an out of the money spread here. So we have all this room to be successful. Even if the stock price goes down just a bit, we can still be successful on this trade. With our assumption, we have to remember that it is still a neutral to bullish assumption. We can profit if the stock price stays the same, we can profit if it goes up, which is our ideal situation, and we can still profit if it goes down, which is okay as well, as long as that spread is out of the money. At expiration, it would be worthless and it would disappear from the account, which would result in max profit for me. Because of this, we want our implied volatility environment to be high. The higher the implied volatility environment, the more credit we're going to be able to receive for this option. Although yes, we're going to have to pay more for that further out option, it's still going to give us the benefit of being able to A, get closer to that stock price and collect more, or if we wanna move our spread further away, a higher implied volatility environment is going to allow us to move these strikes much further out and collect around the same premium as a low volatility environment. So let's talk about what can happen on the next slide here with the stock price and what the changes in that stock price movement will have on the effect of our spread. So if the stock goes up, just like the short naked put, the contracts are going to lose value and implied volatility could contract. So we're selling the spread as a net credit. So although we're selling one option and buying another, again, the short option is going to have more value than the option we're buying. So we're routing this for a net credit. And it's really important to realize that when the stock price moves up, since we're getting further and further out of the money, both of those put contracts are going to lose value. If I'm looking at them individually, I should see a PL gain on this one, that one that I'm selling, and I should see a PL loss on the one that I purchased. But since the option that I sold has much more value than the one that I purchased to define my risk, 
I'm okay with the fact that my long option is losing and my short option is gaining because I have more to gain if this short option expires and goes to zero than I have to lose if this option expires and goes to zero, which is why this is a net credit trade and we want this spread to expire out of the money. If the stock stays the same, we do have theta decay working for us, but we do need to realize that it's going to be at a slower rate than if we were looking at just the naked option. Again, it has the same, the same sort of relationship where we're looking at this short option decaying over time, which results in positive theta for us, and it's good for our position, but at the same time, we're gonna have this long option here that's going to be battling against that theta decay, and it's not going to, it's not going to allow us to realize that full profit potential as quickly as if we were to just sell that short put outright. So we're going to see the theta decay out of that short option there, and that's going to result in positive P&L, but we're also going to see decay come out of that long option, which is going to detract from that positive P&L of the short option. So because of that, we're still going to have a positive theta situation since we're selling this spread for a credit, but it's not uncommon to see that theta decay will work slowly or more slow than if we were to just sell that put outright. And lastly, if the stock goes down, yes, that it, this is the worst case scenario if it goes all the way through our strikes and both of our options become in the money, but we do have defined risk. So it's one, that's the main difference between this spread and selling a naked put outright is that we do have defined risk. So even if both of our options are completely in the money, we don't have to worry about any additional losses because we know exactly what our max loss is at our trade entry. Our contracts are going to gain value, but again, we did sell the spread, so gaining value in the spread is not going to be a good thing. We sell something here, and we want to buy it back at a lower price to close out of the trade and result in that net difference as profit. But if I sell something here, and it actually gains value, I would have to buy it back at a higher price, which would result in a negative P&L. So if our options do move in the money, which that's what would happen if the stock does go down, both of the contracts would gain value and implied volatility could expand. But the interesting thing about that is implied volatility expanding would hurt this option, but implied volatility expanding would help this long put gain value. So the implied volatility expanding wouldn't have as much of effect on this entire spread when I compare it to just looking at that short and naked option. So there's a few things that differ. There's a little small differences that are going to differ between the short put spread here and the short put if we were to trade it outright. But the big differences are the fact that we have defined risk. So we do know that even though when we're trading this spread, we're going to collect a smaller credit, we're still gonna have a higher probability of success. But at the end of the day, if the stock price does go well below our strikes, we're going to have defined risk and we're not going to have any additional risk more than the max loss that we, were, that we knew of at the trade entry, which is unlike that short put where the stock price could go to zero and we would be liable for all of that loss there. But we do have that implied volatility factor as well. So we do know the relationship between implied volatility increasing, which is going to increase the option prices as well because if we just remember that implied volatility, one of the aspects of implied volatility is to give you an idea of where the options prices are or better yet where that underlying is projected to go or expected to go or implied to go I should really say over a certain period of time and all of that plays into the option pricing. So the higher the implied volatility is, the higher those option prices will be and because of that we have the spread here where Although I have a short option and a long option, the implied volatility factor shouldn't be as much of a factor as it would be for just that naked option. But there are some tips I want to give you for this specific strategy, and we'll get into that on the next slide. So it's very similar to the short put. We are still going to look at the break-even calculation, the IV factor, and also what happens when we close a position. So the very first thing is that the break-even calculation is exactly the same as the short put. When we're looking at calculating the break-even, all we have to do is look at our short strike and subtract the credit received from the trade entry. So we would look at this short strike here. Let's say that short strike's on a 50 strike. 
and the stock price is trading at 55, and let's say I collected 50 cents for this trade. If I collected 50 cents and I've got my short put on the 50 strike, that just means that my break even would be at 49.50. I just subtract that credit from the short strike and I'm not looking at the long option here because the long option doesn't really play into my break even. All the long option does is define my risk here and if we want to consider the long option in terms of the credit we received, yes, of course, purchasing that long option is going to reduce the credit I received. So theoretically, it yes, it's going to move my break even a little bit closer to this strike price because I have to pay that value and I can't collect as much as I would if I had just sold that put outright. So we're looking at the break even calculation and really all, that, all you need to know for this one specifically is that we are still going to calculate it from our short strike and our long option does play into this because it reduces our overall credit. So that's the only effect it really has on that calculation there. Just like the short put option when we're selling it naked, the implied volatility factor is the same. The higher the IV, the better, and it's for the exact same reasons. So we talked about yesterday how implied volatility allows us to not only collect more premium if we're looking at the same exact strike, comparing it to a high implied volatility environment to a low implied volatility environment, we're definitely going to be able to collect more premium in a higher IV environment, but if we're looking at collecting a certain value or a certain target value, like maybe I just want to collect 50 cents, I'm going to move, be able to move my strikes much further out of the money, so much, more, much further below the stock price in a higher IV environment and still collect that 50 cents than if I were to look at collecting 50 cents in a very low implied volatility environment. In a low environment, I might have to move my strikes even closer because most of the premium is going to be in the strikes right near the stock price, Whereas in a high implied volatility environment, there's gonna be a lot of value in strikes all across the spectrum here. And lastly, we do look to close these spreads at 50% max profit, but I do want to preface this with the assumption that we have enough credit. We need to remember that with a spread and a defined risk spread, and this one specifically when we compare it to a naked put, we're doubling the legs on the trade. When we had a naked put, we just sold this short option here. When we have a spread, we're selling this option and we're buying another one here. So we talk about commissions and we're basically doubling our commission cost per leg. So I need to know for a fact that I'm, I'm collecting enough credit to make it worthwhile for me to close this at 50%. If I'm only collecting maybe 30 cents or 40 cents, I might consider not managing it at 50% and just letting it hold, it hold it until expiration because if I can hold that trade and hopefully make that profit, then I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to look to do that because I don't want to spend the commissions to get in and spend the commissions to get out, which could eat into the overall profit of the trade. But if I'm collecting maybe something like a dollar or a dollar 30, if I'm looking at maybe a three point wide or a five point wide spread, then absolutely I'm going to look at closing in a 50% profit to lock in that higher win rate. But let's wrap all this up to, with some takeaways for you and we'll wrap it all together and we'll compare it all with that naked put option at the end of the day. So just like the naked put option, we're looking at a neutral to bullish cost basis reduction strategy. We are defining our risk and it's another way to get into a trade or get into an underlying, even with a higher priced underlying, like something like Tesla or Netflix, maybe it's going to be much better for our account to get into this defined risk trade as opposed to a naked option, which could take up a lot of buying power reduction. Just like the short naked put, a short vertical credit put spread is best in a high IV environment because of the reasons we just spoke about. And we're going to look at closing the trade at 50% profit, assuming that we have a high enough credit to offset the extra commissions that we're going to be taking in, that are going to be taken into play in putting this trade on. And lastly, we can defensively roll this for a credit if the stock price is near our short strike. So I did do a previous whiteboard on why it's difficult to, to roll vertical spreads for credit, and I'll put it in the description in the archived video once this is archived today. But it's really important to realize that 
If our spread is totally in the money, we're gonna have a hard time rolling that for a credit. So really, one of the best opportunities to roll it for a credit defensively is if the stock price is near our short strike at expiration, but I'll go in the, into that on that video that I'll put in the description. So thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email here, or you can follow me on Twitter at DoeTraderMike. We've got Jim Schultz coming up next though, so stay tuned.